<laughs> yeah. So you're here. Make sure it's clean. <laughs> Are we ready? Yeah, Are we doing ready. this? What's up friends? I'm Miranda and this video is all about gear storage and maintenance. Gear storage and maintenance is really important if you want to have your gear last a long time. So you should do it. So you don't have to buy that <laughs> twice. Boom, end of video. Uh, oh God, that one doesn't count. This is my show, gosh darn. Gear storage and maintenance is really important to extend the life of your gear. And I think it's something that a lot of us don't do often enough. My dog is here. We have many dogs here today, just two, but well, two and that one. <laughs> That's a deer, yeah. This is obviously not my house. I do not hang animal pelts on my wall. That'd be a weird choice for someone who eats vegan. If you are someone who only backpacks like once a year, then this long-term storage for you is gonna be especially important so your gear lasts until you go on your next trip. I don't know how many times I've talked to someone who's like, oh, I only used my tent three times and the elastic in the poles is all stretched out. It's no longer waterproof or whatever. And then they say that they like rolled it up and stuck it in their garage and they've only used it like three times in the past seven years. It isn't how often you use the gear that's important. It's how you store and maintain it between your trips. So I'm gonna cover all sorts of different tips um, for how to hopefully care for almost all of your backpacking gear but we're gonna start with the big items because those are the most expensive and the most important. So that'll be the tent, sleeping pad, and your sleeping bag. Like sleeping bags like need a little bit of love. It's like if there was a diva, or not even a diva, but like a, if you were to categorize some of your gear as high maintenance, your sleeping bag would be the biggest one. So you're saying that the sleeping bag is like the Mariah Carey of outdoor gear? Yes. Do you not know who Mariah Carey is? Yeah, no, I do. She's saying the hips don't lie song. That is Shakira. <laughs> So when you're storing your tent after a trip, the most important thing is that you make sure that it dries out completely before you put it away. Moisture can breed bacteria, bacteria can degrade the material of your tent. Because moisture is such a big problem, you don't actually wanna store your tent in a fully sealed bin. A shelf in your closet uh, is totally fine, even under your bed is okay. Um, you just don't wanna put it in an airtight bin. When you're putting your tent away after a trip or even during your trip when you're packing up camp, never fold the tent or roll it. Always stuff it. And the reasoning for that is that you don't want to have repeat folds or rolls in your tent body because that can create weak spaces in the material and in the like waterproofing. Stuffing it is better for longevity. And it's also faster and easier and more fun. It's like when you used to have like paper maps in your car and they always fold along the, like in the same kind of way. And then eventually it would just tear at those. Yeah, yeah. it's exactly like that, right. You don't That's want- That's why you crumple your maps. That's why you crumple your maps. <laughs> Stuff your maps into your pocket. <laughs> Also shock cord in poles can degrade over time. So if you haven't used your tent for a long time, I would recommend pulling the poles out and assembling them before you take it on a trip because it's totally possible that the shock cord has lost its elasticity and you're gonna have kind of droopy poles or sloppy pole connections. The nice thing about that is that shock cord is actually pretty easy to replace. You can either replace it yourself by buying shock cord at REI or you can send it in to get repaired. Cool, that's tents. Boom. So when you're storing your sleeping bag long-term, you do not want to leave it compressed. Storing a bag compressed or uh, stuffed into a stuff sack is really bad for the insulation because it makes it stay really compact and then it doesn't properly like re-loft up when you open it up to use it. And so it's not gonna be as warm. So if you've been on a trip and you come back, you should take your sleeping bag out of its compression sack and store it lofted or, you know, like, this basically. When someone first told me that I had to store my sleeping bag lofted, I lived in New York City and I was like, there's literally no way that I can do that. I just like couldn't wrap my head around how I was gonna store this massive bag. And I learned a little bit of a trick that I wanna share with all of you. It's not really a trick. I feel like I say it's a trick, but I'm gonna show you and you're gonna be like, obviously Miranda. But for me, it was a really big deal. You need a hanger and your storage bag. So what we're gonna do is slip it through this hanger like so. Boom, like that. And then I'm gonna take the storage bag and from the bottom of my sleeping bag going towards the hanger, I'm gonna stuff it all in here. Ta-da! 
just like your tent, your sleeping bag should be totally dried out before you put it away. Even just like leave it out to air dry if you were like sweating a lot on a trip. The oils and dirt from your skin can actually compromise the insulation value of your sleeping bag. So it's important that you allow it to air dry. Um, and then if you're an avid backpacker or camper, you should wash your sleeping bag about once a season. And if you're not, wash it like every couple of years. When I say wash your sleeping bag, uh, I think some people are like, how the heck do I do that? For the most part, washing sleeping bags is not actually as complicated as you might think. A lot of sleeping bags can be washed in a large or a commercial washer and a big dryer on low heat. There is down specific wash, but you can generally use any sort of gentle laundry soap and be fine. Best thing you can do is just take your sleeping bag to like a laundromat, bring a really good book and just be prepared to like hang out for a little while while you wash it in the commercial dryer and washer because those are gonna be the largest and the easiest to get it clean and get it dry. I've never washed any sleeping bag I've ever owned. So. Wow. So to go along with your sleeping bag is your sleeping pad. This is very similar to storing your tent. Ideally, you leave your sleeping pad stored hanging up, not stuffed in its stuff sack like this. You do wanna make sure that the inside of it is dried out. So if you are coming back from a trip and you've been using your air to inflate your sleeping pad, then you want to leave it out for a little while with the valve open so you can totally dry out the inside of it. Your sleeping pad also is really susceptible to mold and dirt and things like sunscreen or other chemical treatments. So if you have like a spill of insect repellent, for example, you should definitely clean and spot treat your sleeping pad. And about once a year, it's a good idea to give it a wash down. You can wipe it down with a gentle cleanser, just something to kind of clean off the dirt and oils, because again, that's what's gonna degrade the material over time. So you wanna clean that off so that it lasts longer. Ideally, you store your sleeping pad hanging up, so like draping it over a hanger. And again, you wanna avoid repeat folds. And then if you are using a self-inflating or open cell foam sleeping pad, you can leave it partially inflated and just put it in the back of a closet somewhere or lay it flat. Really, your tent, your sleeping bag, and your sleeping pad are the most challenging things to store and the hardest things to maintain. So if you can tackle that, the rest of the tips I'm gonna give you in this video should be really easy. Nala, do you wanna do this? Pretty good at ventriloquism. Wait, this is you trying to be ventriloquist for Nala yeah. right now? Yeah, I'm talking, all right, you can't tell. Is this good? That's not bad. Okay, so now that we've covered the big stuff, here are some tips for your smaller gear items that will hopefully help them just last a long time and uh, maintain them. Why is talking so hard? So first up, when you're storing your boots or your shoes, uh, you should get them like decently cleaned off before you put them into storage. Again, dirt and debris will degrade fabric and other materials over time. And then if you want to keep bacteria from growing in your shoes, you can use a like defunkify spray or odor absorbing spray. Even some baking soda will work and just shake a little bit of this stuff into your shoes, allow it to sit for a few days and then dump it out. I actually did a whole video on how to clean your water reservoir, but the most important thing is making sure that it dries out completely so you don't have any bacteria forming on the inside. So for my water bag for my water filter, I'll just make sure that this is totally dry on the inside before I store it. Next, uh, first aid. It's less of a storage or maintenance tip and more just like a general good tip. You should check your first aid kit after you use it, after a trip, and especially if you haven't used it in a really long time because uh, first aid supplies have a shelf life, they have an expiration date, and um, you don't wanna be <laughs> like me who just like have a bunch of Band-Aids in a bag, and then when you need a Band-Aid, you realize that all the Band-Aids are open and they've lost their stick and you can't use it. So don't do that. Check your first aid supplies, make sure that you have everything replenished in your first aid kit. For fuel, the most important thing with storing your fuel canisters is that you want to store them in a moderately cool place away from temperature extremes. So. You should not store these somewhere that they're gonna get super, super cold, and you should especially not store them in direct sunlight. So like wine, store them like you would a nice bottle of wine. Yeah, store them like you would a nice bottle of wine. The last tip that I have is for headlamps or really any things that use batteries. So you actually wanna store it without the batteries in the headlamp or lantern or whatever. The reason for this is that the batteries can corrode over time, which can damage the electrical components of your headlamp or your lantern. Damage the electrical components. <sighs> Might be the smoothest thing I've said all day. So you should keep the batteries out of it, stored separately, so that the device itself lasts as long as possible. 
when you're storing your backpack, there aren't any like really important tips for how to store your backpack to maintain it or like to increase its longevity. Just like other outdoor materials, if you have gotten a bunch of sunscreen on it, you can always just spot clean your bag because again, those chemicals and those oils can degrade the material over time. They're very sensitive and you should clean them if you need to. Those are all of my tips for storing your gear, both long-term and short-term between trips. If there's anything that I missed or if you have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. And as always, if you liked this video, hit the like button and subscribe to the REI channel. I will see you all in the wild. I got it. I can do it. Isn't it true that if you like sit on your toes, like with your toes bent underneath you, like sitting on your butt, that it makes you happy? Excuse me? Isn't that true? <laughs> I feel like this is a thing. I feel like because it's painful and it like releases endorphins, I feel happy.